All right, guys, we are back. Sorry about that uh, technical error right there. But right now, we are joined by James of the band. Oh, Come here, hell yeah. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you doing, dude? Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, surviving, you know? You, uh, <laughs> dude, we've been, I personally have been a fan of your band for quite a long time. Uh, we actually reached out to do an interview a couple of years ago, and I think it was yeah. going to go down, but COVID happened and that kind of set everything, obviously not, not the possibility of doing it, but, um, lots of stuff to talk about. First of all, you're in the middle of the airport right now. Cause you're mid tour. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah. I am currently. Yeah. It's, um, it's all happening at the moment or in the the hot zone or whatever um yeah about to go do the second second show of the tour second show that's awesome and i know you guys are playing with yeah. our, our buddies in wind waker who i believe you've been yep. friends with for a while but are you how familiar yeah. are you with uh with caskets oh we'd never this is their first australian tour and we'd never met them but we knew them through sharp tone um because on the same label so that was pretty cool like it's been like oh sweet you know like it's like label buddies kind of thing um yeah how was how was it joining sharp tone because i feel like you guys have probably had a lot of offers over the years but what what was the deciding factor on settling as that your home oh just um because yeah like you said like we had a few um other offers and we were talking to a few people beforehand um but sharp tone really just felt the most like family if you know what i mean um and it sort of came about because we had hit up resist records who's our australian and new zealand um label and so they had sort of we were like oh you know sharp time would be sweet but you know if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen um but it was actually graham from resist that hit up sharp tone and he was like i reckon you guys would dig this and they were like yep sweet straight away like, it, it was that easy pretty, yeah it was i mean it's wow Pretty, I mean, a bit more complicated than I'm making it seem, but it was basically just like they were like, "Yeah, sweet, if Graham thinks so, you know." So they is. they already had um, a good relationship with Resist, so they like they trusted yeah. his word essentially. Yeah, yeah, they've got. Um, I actually can't even think of any, but there's a few bands that are, you know on both labels, um, so they had a relationship already, obviously. Um, and yeah. And you guys have, have have played with Wind Waker a bunch of times, I imagine, in in the past. Do you have any fun, mm. any fun stories for either Will or Liam in the Wind Waker days, or just any anything fun you can tell us about uh, regarding those shows? Uh, not that I would. I wish I had something more. Um, yeah, not nothing that comes to mind. The other boys would probably have a bit because um, I know that they had sort of, you know, we had driven in the like in the van with them, but I never really sort of, you know, I kind of do my own thing a bit. <laughs> Why is the is the uh, album called Ab Abiance, and what does that mean? It's a bayance. It's like it's a, got a. What yeah, is it? A bayance. It's like the uh, emphasis is on like oh, the B, I suppose. Okay, yeah. a a bayance. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean, yeah. though? What does that mean? And why did you just settle on that? It's a. Uh, Actually, there's a term for it, um, but it's like basically like, you know, that temporary state of like when, you know, when you're floating, when you're in limbo land type thing, it's sort of based around that type of a phrase. Um, and it was sort of, because when like we were writing the album, it was obviously COVID's happening. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it was that sort of limbo of, we don't know if live shows are going to come back, if what's going to happen like because it was everything was shut down um and so that sort of helped inspire the sort of name i suppose of the album and because the album is if you a lot of the lyrics and stuff are pretty um correlate to obviously what was happening at the time um yeah so it's sort of based around i suppose the, the times i guess hell yeah I'm sure you and JB got yeah. to talk a second while I was uh, fixing some stuff. But JB, do you have a question or two for James? Yeah, my question is, what is a goal, country, or um, place you would love to perform one day? 
Oh, dude, I think all five of us would say something different. But if it was, oh, I would, I mean, going to the US is the dream for me personally. As much as like Europe would be unreal, like don't get me wrong, but um, I've always wanted to play like House of Blues. Like in in the US, like that. That'd be, be sweet. awesome. Oh, even just like, um, just the fact of like the even thought of going to the US, just the amount of history and everything that's there. Like, you guys have it sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just just being there and being like, holy crap, I'm in New York, and this is a place I've seen so much about. Like all these awesome bands or whatever. Um, for instance, I've got friends in um, Nashville at the moment, um, and they're just loving it. So I've yeah, US probably House of Blues. That'd be the dream. Oh yeah, for sure. That's yeah, great. one great day. Answer. Fingers crossed. <laughs> what's what's the what's the hardest song to perform in your current set list and why? Oh shit. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <every single>. no. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly enough, um, ADD took me a little bit. Um, there's not the like. Mainly just the breakdown. There's a bit in the breakdown on drums where the I was overcomplicating the kick pattern when I was trying to sort of get my head around it again. Um, and that sucked. But it's getting better. But there will be sometimes, like, if a drummer's in the audience, I'm sure they'll go, oh, he missed that one hit. Or maybe I'm just thinking that. But um, Well, you get to hang out with and practice either. with them all the time. So you, you would notice that one little, like, he, he, yeah. he if he screwed up the fill and it was one tom off or something you you yeah. notice that <laughs> yeah yeah completely the other people would have no idea but i'm like oh you know i heard that but it's like a cheeky thing you know um yeah probably ADD. i'm sure this is probably the worst question i could ask but i've got to ask because i've always <laughs> oh. wondered yeah do does the band name have anything whatsoever to do with the fact that there used to be another alt which i believe was from new zealand no i actually because i knew about um yeah alt from new zealand um but i actually don't think the boys really even knew about that band because i think they dissolved what in like the 90s or the early 2000s yeah they're old so school. i think we're in the clear yeah um but no no not that i know of at least no do you have any essentials that are mandatory we're going for going on tour that you would recommend bands consider when going on hypothetically their first tour like these these items beyond the normal stuff like toothpaste toothbrush beyond the normal yeah. stuff these yeah. essentials have to go with you um obviously you know your music stuff in instruments and stuff obviously that's a given but um i always make sure um that i've got uh you know like a water bottle or um even what did i take on new zealand i've always like got ex like too many pair i overpack i've always got too many pairs of underwear because you just don't know socks too you know um but the other thing too like i would almost say if you can condense your instruments into as like less cases as possible, you'd be better off 100% in every, whether you're driving or flying or whatever. Probably that I would say, because I only have like two cases and like, obviously like we're flying. So I've only got two cases to check in um, like my cymbals and my snare and pedals go in one case and a Pelican case. And it's just sweet. It's so easy. <laughs> I have one more and then I'll send it back to JB, but in the in the Devil's Cut music video, is there it obviously shows like a father uh not being the coolest in the world. Is that yeah. taken taken from a personal experience or from someone in the actual band, or is that was that just a concept that the director came up with? No, it was a um it was taken from um from Dan, um, our singer. Um, that's sort of what the song's about, like a turbulent um, relationship with your parental figure and just happen to be your father. Um, and it's sort of, you know, I'm probably not one to speak on, you know, his obviously life, but it's, um, yeah, it's definitely based off of um, real things and personal things that have happened to Dan. Um, and that's actually, we don't play that song anymore, but it's actually probably one of my favourites. <laughs> All the boys are like, no, nah, we don't like it. But I actually 
really dig it. <laughs> For sure. I hate when that happens yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh man, they call one yeah, more yeah. song. You're backstage. You're like, they're saying one more song. Let's do Devil's Cut. And they're like, no, nah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just a rock song. We hate it. It's like, no, no, no. It's actually good. I really dig it. Jamie, what's a, what's another one that you have for him? I got to know. When you're not doing music, what are you doing? Unfortunately, working. Trying to do as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do, you uh, do for work? Uh, my parents own a um, caravan, like, by and sell place. So I, um, yeah, I wear too many hats at that place. I do um, their marketing <laughs> and graphic design and sign writing and, like, decals for the side of the caravan because we do, like, a lot of repairs and sales and stuff. Um, all fun, unreal stuff that I'd totally rather do over doing music. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, um, yeah, just mainly that, just doing that every day of the week so I can pay for this, really. Um, and we all work. Um, like Goose is a graphic designer, like freelance. He's an unreal graphic designer. Um, and Dan works works in a paint shop. He's a manager. Um, Simon works in a music shop, so he's definitely got the 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 ideal job. <laughs> um, yeah, and Oscar is a water salesman. Weirdly enough, a water How'd salesman. You do? Interesting. <laughs> I'd buy it. Yeah. I'd buy it. Yeah, I mean, hey, me too. If, you know, like, oh yeah, all right, you can sell me water. We have a question in chat. It's coming from my buddy Beerbo Baggins. He says, how has your music evolved and what can fans expect beyond uh, beyond this tour and in the future? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I do think we're, because we're starting to write little bits and pieces for because obviously the album, because we wrote the album about a year ago. It was a bit after Dysfunctional was released. Um, and so we've been actually just holding on to it for a while. Um, so we're keen to start moving forward. Um, but I think, um, I don't know. I think we are pretty good because Dysfunctional had hints of, you know, obviously metalcore and a few other little genres like that. Um, and so, yeah, I think the album was just an expansion on that really. Um, so yeah, I think I think it'd be interesting to see how we sort of go forward. Um, yeah, because I know that the that's sort of the reason why we called the band Alt was so that we could, you know, do the thing like fall under sort of any category that we like. Um, like we just toured with Don Broco from the UK, who would, I don't know if you can know them, but they're like yeah yeah I don't even know like yeah like a pop kind of but they're a bit heavy. Um, but then we toured with Sayerson, like so it's we've sort of got that. Um, Diversity, I suppose, is the right word to fit in where we sort of want, you know? Um, yeah, so I think going forward, it, it'll be interesting to see. I think we'll uh, push a little bit more on the heavier side, but we also, I know that Dan loves his like, pop music and Youngblood and like um, bands like that type of a thing and emo rap and that sort of a thing. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see what happens next, really. Um, I'm king. <laughs> when when you said yeah. you you held the album, was that a strategic thing to shop it to get it to a label like a Sharp Tone or something like that, or was that it just wasn't time yet for it to be re released and it just kind of coincided with the finding of the label? Oh, it was a bit of both. I do think it was more strategic, as in yeah, like kind of just okay, well, we've got an album now because it was going to be an EP. Um, but then, you know, we'd written more songs than we'd sort of written off a bit more than we chew, we could chew. Um, and so, yeah, it was sort of a like, okay, now we've got an album. Where do we go from here? I guess we start looking at labels. Um, and, yeah, it was only probably about nine months ago that we signed the contract with the labels. So we'd been holding on to it for a little bit. Um but yeah, it was, yeah, it's probably strategic, I would say. <laughs> I, I know you're bored and I know you're bored in a plane soon, so we'll we'll kind of wrap it up with just a couple more. But yeah, um, just... but um, I I want to know, tell me if you can the absolute worst show Alt has ever played. Everything went wrong. Please tell me oh. the worst experience because it happens to every single band. But what is the worst show that happened that you can recall? Yeah. Which one? No. Uh... <laughs> hey, that's my job. No. 
fun. <laughs> um, I would. Oh, we played a show in Sydney, um, and it was a festival, like a little festival at this sort of three hundred capacity venue. Um, it was great because you know you meet all your. It was a friend, like a one of those shows where it's with a bunch of mates. Um, but. Yeah, we played shit. Like we didn't have a sound check, and we had we're on in ears now. But before that, like at this show, we weren't on in ears at the time. So it was only me with a click track and the tracks, and they the boys had like wedges. But we didn't do sound check. There was barely any line check, and the front of house dude was having issues. And I, like, we went out of time. Like Dan couldn't hear himself. Like it was a <laughs> it was a shit show. <laughs> It's been uphill ever since, I will say. Um, knock on wood, you know. Um, but yeah, that that show's probably the one that sticks out to me the most. That was just like far out. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Yeah. But you you, you yeah. learn you learn from it. You learn from it. Yeah, it could have been worse. You know, could have been a lot worse. I'm gonna ask one more, and then I'm gonna send it to JB for the last question. Uh, if, yeah, no, if, sure. if there is a band that is watching that that wants to be on tour like you are and wants to do what mm-hmm. you do can you give us just general local band advice of uh don't do this bands or or if this situation yeah. happens blank 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 whatever yeah i think um if you're a you know a local band and you're sort of it depends on where you're at but if it was if we had to do it again i think um definitely getting your name out and starting to do things independently and then people will come to you if you know what i mean like like if you're like hey let's go play in this state and this state and let we'll just drive for a weekend do it like book your own gigs like get the bands for research bands because then you make friends with other bands in other states and then they go hey you're sick we'll bring you over or when we come over like you know you house them um and i think doing things when you're starting off independently because obviously no one's going to come to you is just will be a serious sort of thing to be able to show booking agents and labels and like oh okay they're actually you know they're doing their own thing they're fine you know Um, and then they start getting interested in you you know um yeah so i think definitely just doing it yourself I mean, it's a pretty obvious answer, I suppose, because a lot of bands are doing that now. Um, but also be, if you get contacted by someone, be firm with what, who you are and what you want out out of, you know, the label or the booking agent um, and make sure that you're getting what you want. Because if you've worked so hard, it's just to throw that all away, you know, to have an agent be like, nah, like we're going to do this. Like it's, you can be fickle, if you know what I mean. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's probably my two cents out of my brain. <laughs> yeah, it's a great answer, I would say. JB, send him out. <laughs> send him out with a fun one. Send him out with a fun one. And safe travels, right, brother. Right. We we thank you for doing this. I know it wasn't easy to pull off, and I'm sorry I had a meltdown minutes before, but uh... nah, nah, nah. nah, thank you for having me, boy. All right, a fun one. Would you rather yeah. camp oh. in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nature, or would you be or would you take a trip to go camp on the beach or be in kind of like the beach climate? I reckon a trip in the middle of nowhere. I don't like sand. I'm like Anakin Skywalker. You know? I mean, that's the only like, association. I hate I sand too. Uh, it gets everywhere. And you get everywhere. wet and then you get out of the beach <laughs> and it's just still sandy. Like, it, I, yeah, in the middle of nowhere every day of the week, even if it's terrifying and it's haunted or whatever else. Um, <laughs> I would so rather that over the beach. Um, Love it. Which is probably might upset people, but that's okay. <laughs> one one final last question. Absolute last yeah, question. Yeah. You, you, okay, no. Sold out show. The tour is going down this week. Sold out show. 50,000 yeah. people. It's 40 more thousand than the capacity holds. Somehow you still play it. Yeah. 50,000. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, we're eating good, boys. We're eating good. What are you ordering, James? What is your favorite oh, munchy meal? Dude. Crap. Um, pizza. No, pizza. What do you I'm put on? What are your though. toppings? What do you put on it? I love like a lot of meat and like barbecue sauce, like a meat lovers. If, um, actually, there's a place near where I live 
who have a New Yorker and it's like like beef mince with like bacon the, the foldables and, and stuff like the foldable slices yeah a little bit smaller because australia hasn't caught up to that sort of a thing yet um <laughs> but, but barbecue sauce like and heaps of cheese if it's like yeah that that would be it for me that would do me for i'd be gone i'd be cooked <laughs> i love it i love it well, James, safe yeah. travels, man. Uh, we, we hope that you guys Thank sell you out work. tons and tons and tons of merch and you come back loaded and wealthy and you don't have to go back to those oh, jobs. But for real, I think you guys, I, I, I believe in you guys. I have for a long time. I feel like you're going to be quitting those jobs sometime in 2024 and uh, we're going to get be hey, able to get you over here to the States. It. And best believe yes. I'm, I'm at that show, bro. I yes, sir. Yes, yes. We'll have to, when we go over, come say hi. Absolutely. We'll, we'll catch up. Thank awesome. you, James, Thank for doing us. So we appreciate boys. it, man. Look after yourselves. James awesome. of the Steve band. Been a pleasure. Oh. Give me a hell yeah. Welcome to the local band Smokeout.